Welcome to Data Barrett's Classroom. My name is Joe, and today I'm going to talk about how to build web applications in Amazon Web Services. For you that don't know, Amazon Web Services is a scalable public cloud service which is used for hosting some of the largest web applications in the world like Dropbox and Spotify. The diagram here on the right hand side shows how you can build a scalable application in Amazon Web Services. What we're going to talk to you about before we get to this is three steps in how you would do that. Step one we call pre-build. So this is important to think about the language that you develop your application in to ensure that you can scale quickly on demand and with the success of your business and application. The load and hits and requests that you expect your site to get moving forward and how you can scale that quickly. The access to your website. So who is going to be accessing this from around the world and what are their geolocations? And finally, database. So do you develop in NoSQL, MySQL, MSQL? What best suits your needs and how you can scale that application quickly? Step two, deployment and development. So on the left-hand side here, what we can clearly see is a simple stack. This is what you would have for your development cycle. It's important to decouple your application. So as you can see, the web server, app server, and RDS, which is a managed MySQL, MSQL database service, are all decoupled from each other. This ensures that when you do your test deployment through your continuous development cycle through your source repository on Git, you can ensure that your site can scale on demand and quickly. And during this process, you can do right sizing of your web tier and your app tier and your database to ensure that you're not wasting resources as you move forward. Step three, go live. So as you can see, the web tier, the app tier, and the database tier have now been scaled across multiple availability zones. This ensures resiliency of your application. If anything happens to an availability zone in Amazon, you can ensure that your website will stay up and running. You would also set up auto-scaling. So this ensures that if there's a lot of load to your website, additional web servers or app servers can take that load away and can ensure that that application will be up and running. You would then use things like Amazon S3, for content delivery. So if you're a media company and you have lots of images and videos, that would be a great way to store your content and then deliver that through CloudFront. CloudFront is a content delivery network service, or you could use Akamai or any service that you're familiar with to deliver your content around the world. So you could host your website in Ireland, but you could deliver content quite easily to Singapore or Australia. Finally, it's important that you have monitoring. So Amazon CloudWatch, which is an internal monitoring service for your application, but it's also important to have an external monitoring service so that if anything happens to that website, you can quickly react and ensure that that stays online. So the takeaways really are to architect in the right way before you migrate to Amazon Web Services, continuous development through GitHub or any source repository that you're familiar with, and to build with resiliency in mind.